Hello, I'm Ninja Dan GD. People don't consider me a pro player, but I've been around for a long time, watching pro players rise and fall over the years, and I've begun to notice a few patterns in how these cycles work. But recent events have thrown my older theories right out the window as I can't help but notice that something seems off about this generation's community of pro players. These pro players just seem to appear out of thin air, with little to no progression, doing incredible jumps from levels such as Toe 2 to Tidal Wave, or Cataclysm to Slaughterhouse. So I did some investigation, and I've discovered the truth. The pro player community is lying to you. Through studying of all of their live streams and completions, I've begun to notice some new and revolutionary techniques that I've never seen before that boosted their skill to an insane degree. I've started adopting these new techniques to see if they would improve my lackluster skill, and to my surprise, I received a game-breaking skill boost. I started making secret progress on incredibly difficult levels. I tested out this technique by playing around with top 1 challenges, I even accidentally verified a few, plus you know, generic Tazbar, I don't think it even comes with clipbot, and GG, Waterhouse jump. Yay! So I decided to go for a full length level, which was the Sakupin Circles remake Exxon's Limit. Yes! And then I moved on to Tunnel of Despair. Yay! But all these levels were too easy for me, so I jumped to Tidal Wave. Ooh, I beat it! And better Vernus and Acheron quickly after. My current hardest is Vehemence, which at this stage is an upcoming top 1 that no one knows I've secretly verified yet. In fact, you can see all these completions on my channel. I frame them as botting videos, so it looks like I'm botting a level, but in reality I do a quick practice run of one of these levels, and then I slow it down to a quarter of its original speed, and then I voice over it in the edit. And then at the end of the video I attach my legitimate completion as a showcase. And now I feel like it's time for me to share my secrets with you all, because I've had enough of these lies spread by pro players who claim that they rise in their skills due to factors such as natural talent, grinding levels for hours, never giving up, a high refresh rate monitor, a good keyboard, Zbot, or any other matter of made up factors. In this video we're going to go in depth into the real factors, the hard truths that make a pro player in Geometry Dash. Because the truth is, that anyone can be a pro player. All you need to do is follow these five simple steps and you can conquer Geometry Dash just like I have. Firstly, do you wonder why every pro player uses the up arrow key instead of the mouse or the spacebar? Well the reason why is because the gamers that rely on gravity such as the ship, ball, swing, and UFO react more consistently when the up arrow is used. This is because the up arrow key has an image of an arrow pointing upwards which confirms the fact that when you use this key for inputs, the gravity is not as strong, because as the arrow shows, the gravity is up. There's a tiny gravity force in the opposite direction of the in-game physics, which makes these gravity-based game modes a lot more consistent than if they were controlled with, this, with the spacebar and the mouse. Now, for my next tip. You will inevitably be spending a long time on a single level dying over and over again in the same section as you grind the level to get better at that section that you're struggling with. But there is a way to maximize the most out of your time when grinding, in which the long run results in further runs. I found that when I struggled with a particular part of the level, if I turn the game down to the minimum FPS required for the level to still be possible, and then run 4 other resource hungry processes on my computer which cause screen tearing and random frame skips, in the short term, my experience will get even worse, but eventually, I would pass that one section that I kept dying to, and then eventually do it consistently. This takes slightly longer than if you were to grind the level without these encumbrances, but it's worth it after you get a few successful runs. At this point, you kill all those processes and bring the game back up to maximum FPS. Once I did this, I would get an unnatural skill boost and get a run that would absolutely dominate any progress I had beforehand. In fact, it was using this strategy that I was able to fluke Acheron from 80%, so I highly recommend using this FPS trick. Now my third tip will help with spamming. Due to the rising difficulty of list demons these days, 
creators seem more and more inclined to add annoying spam sections in their top 1 extreme demons, whether it's the orb spam in Silent Club Step, or the wave spam in Sekupin Circles. I found this one spam strategy was incredibly helpful at keeping consistent clicks, and allowed me to reach high CPS speeds. However, bear in mind that you will need a rather large spacebar for this trick. The idea is, is that you put every finger on your two hands on the spacebar, and then move them up and down at different times as fast as you can. And it takes a bit of practice, but with this technique I can get 30 CPS, and spam at 25 CPS consistently enough so that I can get through a straight corridor in the mini wave. But as soon as I start going over that 25 CPS limit, my spamming can get quite inconsistent. So make sure that you remember that limit, but who knows? I might not have fast enough fingers. Maybe when you try this technique, you might end up staying consistent at even faster speeds than I can. Also, if you do manage to reach 30 CPS, spider click counters are just a breeze. They're all too easy. And on the topic of spamming, here's another pro tip. Spamming makes straight fly free. That is, if you can spam consistently. Which once you've mastered the spam strategy from my previous tip, shouldn't be too hard. In fact, spamming during straight fly makes the difficulty so trivial that it's actually criminal. I mean, why even do that thing where you tap slowly to readjust yourself and risk hitting spikes when you can just spam and stay perfectly in the center? I mean, the only disadvantage is orbs and ship gameplay, which, yeah. You would have to tap a bit more precisely and with intention, but otherwise, straight fly, and even slightly curved straight fly, is made trivial if you can just spam consistently. Except for something like the silent club step ship in which the curved straight fly is pretty angular. And to be honest, I'm not the best at that kind of straight fly either, but I've found that you just kind of have to spam like you would with upward spam, which most of the time does the trick. The technique is kind of hard to explain, but if you listen to these clicks, you'll kind of hear what I'm getting at. Now for the fifth, and most important secret that I'm going to share with you today, is icon selection. You see, everyone thinks about their icon selection. They want to have the best looking, most detailed icons so they can show off and reflect their personality. But in the pro playing scene, these icons are only going to drag you down. Have you ever noticed that nearly every pro player ever has the most basic, boring, default looking icons ever? Well. That's because they're easy to look at and track on the screen, and they give a ridiculous performance boost because of this. And also, colour is a very important factor when choosing your icons for a level. You have to make sure the icons stand out from the level so they don't merge into the background and you lose track of your icon and you die. From experience, the best colours to use, which you may have to swap between depending on the colour of the level, are white, green, and yellow. Make sure that these are the boldest and purest forms of those colours, so they don't look like trash and actually stand out. Personally for my icon set, I've stuck, I've stuck with the default stuff because they're secretly the best icons in the entire game. I use default green for the same reason that MatPat uses green on the text of his thumbnails. It stands out against nearly every single level design and colour choice ever, apart from Erebus. But Erebus looks pretty trash anyway, so I doubt I'd ever play that. Also, icons that are perfectly square like my one have a perfect hitbox outline, so you can see exactly where you can get hit on the icon, unlike some of these other icons where it looks like you can just die to midair. Also, this wave here, the circle wave, is the most overpowered wave in the whole of Geometry Dash. I tried it once, I tried it twice even, but I decided not to, because it was just too powerful, and I didn't want to beat every single wave challenge ever over the course of a month. This wave has the uncanny ability to align you perfectly in wave corridors. It's probably some placebo effect rubbish that makes you think that your wave is bigger than it actually is and subconsciously makes you try harder or something like that. But as you can see, all the pro players use this wave, and for good reason. It's the most overpowered tool in the whole of Geometry Dash, and I'm really surprised that Robtop hasn't nerfed this one yet. But that's all the secrets that pro players won't tell you, and now you know them too. And who knows, one day you might be an even better player than I am. After all, I'm only known for beating very insane levels. And imagine someone who can beat very insane demons. Together we will take down the pro player establishment and become the new masters of the demon list. Now, 
I'm off to verify Eternus. See you in the next Ninja Dan video.